Hello and welcome to uh, tonight's unique virtual debate for candidates running for the upcoming April 6th election for Niles Main District Library Trustee. Uh, the event was organized by the Library Administration and moderated by me, Niles Journal reporter Tom Robb. This election has a total of eight candidates running for four seats, including uh, six candidates running for three six-year terms and two candidates running for um, one two-year term. Those candidates are Becky Keene Adams, uh, Suzanne Schoenfeld, uh, Patty Rosansky, uh, Angelica Schwab, uh, Steve Folger, uh, Olivia, and Olivia and Olivia Hnusiak were running for the six-year terms, along with Jack Ryan and Joe McCullo, who were both uh, running for the two-year terms. Um, all of those candidates except Olivia Hanusiak are here today. Uh, Olivia contacted us earlier this evening and said that she couldn't make it. Uh, earlier today, uh, names were drawn at random to determine the order of candidates, uh, how they would be given their question, their opening statements and questions. Um, each candidate will have two opening statement, uh, two uh, minutes for opening statements. Uh, we will start with uh, Becky Keen Adams and follow in order with uh, Suzanne Schoenfeld, uh, Patty Rosansky, Jack Ryan, Angelica uh, Schwab, uh, Steve Folger, and Joe McCula. Uh, also, my apologies if I'm mispronouncing any names. Uh, each question will be put to each candidate. Uh, ca candidates will have one minute to answer. Um, the first question following the uh, Opening statements will go to the second person in order, would be Ms. Schoenfeld, um, and then following that order with Ms. Keen Adams, and so on. Um, then the following question after that will start with uh, uh, the question two will start with Patty Rosansky, and then Jack Ryan, and so on. Um, each um, we will try to get as many questions as we, as we can in the one hour forum. Uh, when candidates are speaking, they will be unmuted. Otherwise, they will remain muted um, through, the, uh, through the forum. Uh, because of the number of candidates participating in this debate, and in the interest of time, uh, there will be no direct rebuttals um, of answered questions. Uh, candidates wishing to rebut a statement of another candidate may do so within their time in the next round of questions or in their closing statement. Uh, the public was given the opportunity to submit questions for tonight's forum. Uh, those questions along with questions of the moderator were collected and vetted by the moderator and not shared with anyone else before tonight's event. Uh, in the case of some duplicate questions, uh, some questions were combined um, in the interest of getting as many questions in as we could. Um, Okay, so we're gonna start with, with opening statements now. So again, we're gonna start with uh, Ms. Keen Adams. Um, you have two minutes. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you, Tom Rob, for moderating tonight. And thank you to the other candidates who are here with us tonight and to everyone who is watching. I appreciate everyone that's here tonight. I am Becky Keene Adams. I have lived in Niles since 2015. My family and I moved here from Chicago. I was born and raised there. I am a graduate of Northern Illinois University with a degree in family social services. I worked for about 13 years as an instructor of English as a second language, English, Spanish, and citizenship. Um, I am bilingual in English and Spanish. Bienvenidos a los que hablan español. Um, after that, I had a position as the director of a ESL and citizenship program at a community center in the city, where some of my duties <clears throat> were budgeting, hiring, training, supervising, writing grants, and more. Under my leadership, we applied for and won an award from the League of Women Voters. I spent some years at home then to raise my children and some time working in elementary schools. And in 2019, I decided to have a career change and I applied to graduate school where I am currently studying my, for my master's degree in library and information sciences. I also am working at a part-time job in a local library. Um, I have served as a volunteer for many organizations over the years, including Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, uh, Oakton Community College, 
the Culver PTA, St. John Brayboff, St. Juliana, and more. I have a clear history of community service. Uh, about a year ago, I began attending the board meetings virtually. And in October, when a position became available, I got really excited um, and I applied for it and got it. Um, and I see I'm running out of time. So I just, again, wanna thank everyone for coming tonight and I hope we all are able to exchange some good ideas. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, next, and, and uh, because Ms. Hanusiak is not here, uh, she did give an opening statement to be read by uh, Ms. Schoenfeld. And so Ms. Schoenfeld is next for her opening statement. Then immediately after that, I'll, I'll allow her to uh, read Ms. Um, Ms. Hanusiak's statement. Um, and then we'll, we'll go on from there. We can unmute Ms. Schoenfeld now. Yeah, it is not letting me unmute people. I don't know what is different about the way it's set up tonight. So if you can please unmute yourself. I apologize for that because I did tell you not to. No, I think we got it. Go ahead. Thank you so kindly. I'm reading on behalf of Olivia Hanusex. She was unable to attend this evening. She has lived in Niles for over 20 years. She attended Culver Elementary and attended Niles West High School as a child. She participated in many programs at our library, offered and continued to use a lot, utilizes it in her resources. It had helped her through nursing school and passed the state boards. I'm running for trustee of the Niles Main District Library because I want to see changes in the community I've grown up in. I'm a registered nurse and I just as I strive to provide the best care for people at work. I want to ensure the library does the same for the district's residents. There are many opportunities for change so that our library can be better service. A primary concern in the library's current spending, it is not appropriate nor reviewed. There are many programs offered at the library. However, there have been no evidence that the library is measuring the usefulness or success of these programs. A system needs to be put in place to ensure time and money is spent wisely and the programs offered and the programs that are beneficial and actually used. Another alarming concern is the lack of professionalism demonstrated by the current board. My team and I respect each other and will extend their respect to one another. We will make certain professionalism publicly and respect are withheld because it is clearly lacking. In closing, I want to thank each and every wonder, one of you and the library needs to be better than what it currently stands for. We can make a better team. Steve Folga, Aunt Olivia, Susan, and Joe McCoola and please vote responsibly. Okay, now, uh, Suzanne, if you wanna continue with your own personal opening statement. Thank you. My name is Suzanne Schoenfeld and I lived in Niles for over 20 years. In this time, I've become a lifelong library lover and community volunteer. Due to my involvement in the community, I've enjoyed firsthand engaging with other members and working with them to achieve goals. With that experience in mind, I want to see the library to continue to grow with the help of our diverse community. By having that personal connection to individuals, I hope that this will allow them to feel comfortable voicing their opinions and concerns and base our understanding of off facts, not fiction. If elected, I hope to do this by creating a citizen book selection committee, partnering with local schools to create programs for their students based on learning styles and needs, as well as not limiting our programming for seniors. By bringing programs that constitute with higher creative attendance, and currently we only have 27% of Niles Main residents using our facility. I believe that through our experience volunteering at St. John Breboff Church and the Girl Scouts of America, 
will provide me with the tools needed to make Niles residents and hear their voices heard. I have excellent problem solving skills and keen understanding of how money should be spent. My hope is that through these skills, I'm able to work with the board to continue to obtain a state of art library without unnecessary spending. And in closing, it's the position that makes the leader, it's the leader that makes the position. And I hope to show you if I win this election that we can all work together. Thank you. Uh, next, we're gonna have for an opening statement, uh, Patty Rosansky, you have two minutes. Good morning, or good evening. I'm Patty Rosansky. I've lived in Niles for the past 39 years and have served on the library board for the past six as a trustee. During this time, I am proud to say that the library staff has received many prestigious awards, which include the Star Library Award, an award for the Best Deal Ever campaign, and the Government Finance Officers Association Award given for the 2019-2020 budget. I have been fiscally responsible for the library, its future. Our taxes have many, have main uh, flat through many of the years I've been on. I have voted to keep them flat for this current tax year. Our library will continue to be the gem of our community if you vote for our slate. I also voted to return a million dollars to give taxpayers even more relief in response to the community's hardship due to the pandemic. You should also know that the current board not only relies on community taxes, but also receives grants and passport revenues to support our budget. I am very proud to say that during this pandemic, we also, as a board, retained all of our dedicated staff so they could serve your needs during this unpredictable time. I would like to share a quote from my granddaughter. Grandma, can I go to the library for my birthday this year? This is her one gift she wants from me. And I want the Niles Library community to feel the same way about their library. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marzanski. Uh, next, we're gonna have an opening statement from uh, Jack Ryan. Mr. Ryan, I believe you're still muted. Um, there we go. Oh, give me All right, there perfect. Hi, my name is Jack Ryan. I would like to first thank Tom Robb for moderating and to the district residents who are watching. I have been a proud member of the Niles community for 22 years and have grown up during the technology boom and wouldn't be as knowledgeable about certain topics if it wasn't for the staff and programs that our award-winning library has to offer. I learned how to research more effectively using databases recommended by the librarians, and it helped me in my education and career immensely. I recently received a master's in accounting with a focus in taxation, so my knowledge would be very beneficial, especially in performing my board duties to analyze the budget and per perform proper due diligence so that I can vote confidently on the library's future. I have a passion for libraries and their importance in our community, and it'd be an honor to be able to give back by becoming a member of the Niles Main Library Board. The library's role is to serve the needs of the community and a vote for me is a vote for maintaining the values of the library and the community that we all love. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Next, we're gonna go to Angelica uh, Schwab. Good evening, buenos tardes, and dobre vietur. Thank you to Tom Robb for moderating, the other candidates for participating in tonight's forum, and to all of you who are watching. I'm Angelica Schaub, a first-generation Polish-American running as a write-in candidate for a six-year term on the board. I have lived in Niles nearly my entire life. I grew up here, attended Maine East High School, 
and some of my first jobs were at the Niles Family Fitness Center and the Niles Park District Summer Camp. I am wholeheartedly connected to this community and the library has held a constant presence in my life. I remember in elementary school using the library to seek out resources for writing papers. In high school and college, the library was a close to home, quiet study space. As a mother, I take my daughter to the library to explore the children's library. And in my professional life, I see the ways the library promotes literacy, creativity, and exploration for children attending schools in the Niles Main District. I earned a bachelor's degree from Northeastern Illinois University in Spanish and have a master's of nonprofit administration from North Park University. I built my career serving as a leader in the nonprofit and public sectors. As a leader in organizations like the YMCA, Boys and Girls Clubs, and District 63, I created and managed budgets, successfully developed strong teams, cultivated community partnerships, and developed innovative programs to best serve the needs of the community. If elected to this board, I will serve you humbly and use my skills and expertise to ensure that we stay relevant, ask questions, and that we are good stewards of taxpayer dollars while serving our entire district community. Thank you. Thank you. Next, uh, for an opening statement, we go to Steve Folger. Uh, good evening. My name is Steve Folger, uh, Dr. Steve Folger, and I hope to be part of the new uh, library board. I've been a Niles resident and a frequent library user for over 20 years. Now, being a member of the library board would be an honor because I believe that libraries are a cornerstone of our democracy. But I also believe that changes in our library need to be done. Within the last year, the livelihood of many of our residents have changed because of the pandemic. People have lost jobs, they've lost their income. Library hours and attendance were cut by pandemic restrictions. And so I think that the library spending should follow these trends and be limited and assigned to services most needed by the community. We will examine and consolidate the con current 150 plus library programs. And recent examples of excessive spending by the current board include a $443,000 health insurance policy, a $900,000 new roof, a $57,000 phone system that are appropriate at a time when people are struggling to pay bills. Instead, our team pledges to be able to provide sound financial oversight on the library spending and transparency to all of the residents. And we will implement a formal bidding process for all major services with broad resident involvement. Now, the most recent public data shows that only 27%, 27% of Niles, Maine's public population uses our library, but our overall spending is similar to other library districts with much, much greater public involvement. That means that the spending that we have is high, resident use is low, that much change. And so in conclusion, we want to bring sensible spending aligned with the current financial conditions, look at new innovative programs for uh, job creation, community health and wellness, and provide civic and history uh, history uh, education to all. Thank you very much for your time, and I ask for your vote. Thank you, Mr. Foga. Uh, next, we go for uh, last closing statement to uh, Joe McCool. Thank you. Have to unmute yourself, Joe. You're still muted. So in the left-hand corner of your screen, there should be a little microphone that you can click on. I am so sorry, I am not able to unmute you. you. Normally I can, but it's not letting me. 
So that was the, yeah, so right okay. beside, got it. there you go. There you go. Okay, go, Joe, because you're going to lose your time. Hello. Okay, go ahead and start, Joe. Okay, my name is Joe McCullough, and I've been a Niles resident since 1971. I attended most of the library board meetings for the last four years, including Zoom meetings, and I've seen the videos of some that I didn't attend. I am up to date on current library matters, and I have presented ideas to the board through comment, public comment at many meetings. And many of these other candidates here have not been at any of these meetings. I can guarantee that. Uh, through freedom of information, I have come to understand more thoroughly details of library operation and practices. Over this extended period of time, I have come to the conclusion that the current board is dysfunctional and broken and has delegated away many of its responsibilities to library staff and the director. The current board has left the creation of the budget to library staff and detailed oversight and due diligence do not exist. The current board has delegated all hiring of personnel to the library director and they don't find out until afterward that staff has been increased and for what reason. Processes, procedures, and outcomes are not measured, analyzed, or accounted for realistically. For example, there are no realistic, accurate counts of original borrowings or program attendance. Late returns are counted as original borrowings, and all renewals are also original borrowings. This is fake reporting and designed to hide the real circulation numbers, which are drastically declining. I have witnessed this disres the disrespect and name calling by current board members that want to be reelected. I'm running with three outstanding team members, Olivia Hanushek, Steve Folga, and Susan Schoenfeld. We have all seen enough of this dysfunctional board and wasteful spending. We want to bring professionalism and normal business practices to the operation of our library. We need your vote for our entire team so that we can succeed in improving our library for the 21st century. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Joe. Now we're gonna get into questions. Um, I would remind everyone that although you have a minute for questions to answer, um, if you keep your answers shorter and more succinct, we'll get to more questions. Um, and we'll start with a quick softball question um, that hopefully can be answered in just a quick one or two words. Um, what book are you currently reading? And we're gonna start with uh, Suzanne. Um, book that I just finished. I actually read the new book from Olivia and it's an actual Christmas book that has taken place in 1987 and it goes through the history of what she has gone through from childhood all the way to adulthood because she lost her husband and what she achieves is going to be substantial when she fish excuse me witnesses her other husband, and they live happily ever after. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Patty, what's what's on your reading list? Arlen Corrin, okay. And uh, Mr. Ryan. I'm reading the first book in the Dark Towers series by Stephen King. Very good. Uh, Ms. Schwab. I'm reading um, Erasing Institutional Bias by Tiffany Jana and Ashley Diaz Mejia. Very good. Mr. Folga. Reading The Hobbit by Tolkien. I keep rereading that book. It's, uh, it's sort of, there's, there's, how can I say, it sort of rings within my soul. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Mr. McCula. I'm reading uh, On Freedom of the Press by Mark Levin. I don't read very much of, uh, fiction. I tend to read nonfiction books. Very good. And Ms. Keen Adams. Uh, I don't have time to read, uh, a lot of time to read fun books right now. I am currently reading Library Management for one of the courses that I'm taking. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to get into kind of more substantive, uh, complicated issue-based questions. I just thought we'd start start things off a little light. So for this question, um, what role should 
the library play in the community and what is the scope of services the library should provide in terms of programming services and available items to borrow. Uh, what services should be increased, decreased, or kept the same? And what specifically uh, would you cut or increase? Um, and what is the role of budgeting uh, in making these decisions? So we're going to sit that first to uh, Ms. Rosansky. Sorry, you're still on mute. Could you please repeat the question? Because it sounded to me like you were asking multiple questions in one, and it was kind of hard to wrap my mind around both of them at the same time. So if you could please repeat it, maybe I could answer it better. Yeah, so yes, it is a multi-part question, but they're, they're kind of- Yeah, weird. I'm sorry. Um, I was focusing on one part and then you kept going and I'm like, oh God, now what do I do? So what is the role of the library in the community? And what is the scope of services that the library should provide? Is that that's the basic tenets of the question. In terms of services and programming, what should be, be, people be able to borrow? Um, should these in, be increased or decreased or kept the same? So what's the role of the library and what broadly speaking um, should be increased, decreased within what the library does? Well, I know right now, because of the pandemic, we have definitely increased in our e-reading, which is due, which we have had a lot of anyway. On if people click into our internet access, they can get on that. Um, and I, they have been doing a lot of programs on Zoom. I participated in several. Um, my children, they have a lot of programs, story time and things like that. Um, they've also been doing, if you're familiar at all with the children's department and Wonderground, I think it's called, or is it Underground, underground excuse me, two different places. Uh, they've been doing actual science things online for the kids to participate with. And it's been fantastic. They, there are so many things that our librarians have reached out and opened up for people on Zoom. Thank you. Okay. Um, so next is gonna go to uh, Jack Ryan. Do you need me to re restate the question? All right, there we go. All right, so uh, the library's role, as I said in my opening statement, uh, is to serve the community that it is in. And um, I believe there should be focuses um, in virtual programming um, that can engage the residents since there is little engagement to be had in the home or in house and the library just because of restrictions and such. So hopefully um, we can have more virtual, pro I mean, we already have a lot of virtual programming but um, I think if we can expand on that to find new ways to engage the residents, that would be very beneficial to our community. And that's all. Okay, very good. Um, next, next, uh, Ms. Schwab. Um, again, broadly speaking, what's the role of the library in the community and, and as far as scope of services, is there anything that should be increased, decreased, cut, what have you? I think the library's role is to cultivate a love of literacy, a love of reading, and a love of learning, and doing that by working with the schools as a close partner. And I think by reaching more schools and working with the schools more, we're reaching more families and increasing the presence of the library across the entire district. Um, in terms of what needs to be increased or decreased, it really depends on what the community's needs are. And a community needs assessment survey can easily show what the community needs and wants from our library to be a full service comprehensive place where it meets those needs. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Folga, uh, do you need me to restate the question? Uh, no, sir. 
So okay. I think that the role of the library and our community is help educate the public and be able to have them understand their role as citizens within our democracy. And so as such, the programs that actually lead to that, I think would be very helpful and we should in reinforce that. Now there's a number of duplicative uh, programs that are existing at this point that are such as we have a yoga program that's also competing with the one that's at the Niles Health Center. We have programs for the seniors, which is competing with the work that's being done at the Niles Senior Center. So I would say that maybe we should look at those. I agree, we should have the community be able to get their input into what they say is important, but at the same time, be able to see things in the limelight of what's going on with the pandemic. So let's look at retraining people, being able to go ahead and give them new skills, be able to talk about, you know, help with Zoom. Like you see people are having trouble with Zoom right now. And so maybe a help desk so that people be able to actually get on Zoom. Uh, I've talked with a number of my friends, they had a problem with that. Uh, so thank you very much. Okay, very good. Uh, next, Mr. McCullough. Um, one thing I think the library should have is ebooks for every single edition that it has there, especially for the kids' books, because at this time, a lot of people aren't coming to the library. We don't know what the situation is going to be post COVID, if people are even going to want to touch books. I, I don't know, but uh, we should have ebooks for all that. I agree with Mr. Folga. There, there's uh, programs that are duplicated by the park district. There's dance and yoga and all types of stuff that it, it uh, we need to. We don't need two uh, government bodies doing the same thing and, and both having a cut into the attendance of the other. So I, I think we need to, to uh, sort that out and uh, uh, combine uh, programs in that sort. Uh, the library is a, uh, is a depository for all the, uh, for, for literature, for, for the community. It's, People depend on, on the library for books and for DVDs and uh, magazines and newspapers and reference. And, and uh, I, that's the main focus it has to keep. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Keen Adams. Thank you, yes. Um, I, I see the library as a safe haven for many in the community. Um, it's a place where we need to meet the patrons where they are with the needs that they have and the desires that they want to get at the library. Uh, it's a place where they can come to enrich their lives in, in a variety of ways. Um, as far as um, the scope of programs, I think that the variety of programs we offer are wonderful and I feel they are well attended. Uh, we had a survey done, the results of that were in last night and showed that our programs are very well attended. However, I do think that evaluation of collections and programs is always a good thing and needs to be an ongoing process. Uh, I think there is always opportunity for new types of collections and new types of programs. Um, and as far as the budget, I think the budget controls what happens with the programming. You have to always stick to the budget. You can't really go over it. I don't see that as a, a choice. So you have to stick to the budget and work within that. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, Ms. Schoenfeld. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, in terms of the question, I feel that we should actually enforce, since this pandemic, we need to add courses for people that need to find new careers, new guidance in terms of which direction to go to. We need to have one-on-one -on -one communication for people to understand and relate. We need careers and actual subjects for intercommunication for people to actually partake in and students as well. We need to collaborate with the parks and we need to collaborate with the schools to actually give better programming. Okay. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And um, and actually that uh, kind of leads into the next question, which we'll start with Mr. Ryan. Um, how would you address partnering with other agencies or entities such as schools, townships, park districts, village governments, or other entities such as nursing homes, long-term mm -hmm. care or long-term care facilities? What if any changes would you recommend? Um, I think that would be a great idea to partner with um, the other agencies and such um, because we can create programming that can benefit 
not only just in our library, but we can have um, sort of concierge people come from the retirement homes to our library, which um, if they aren't able to use the free bus, then um, also um, we can have um, sort of crowdfunding events if that ever um, in the future, obviously, because right now that's those events are not happening, but um, that would be another sort of, sort of revenue that we could get um, just being active and out in our um, community and being able to fund our, get a new source of revenue from donors. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. Um, Ms. Schwab. Thank you. I would welcome collaborating and creating collaborative relationships with the park districts, the townships, both Niles and Maine, um, and uh, yeah. Gulf Maine Park District. It would increase the amount of people that would be reached by library services, as well as other services created by the other agencies and entities. It would increase the attendance. It would increase how um, the reach of library services and really create a, a sense of team within the community versus individual agencies. It, it, it could create a, a, a one Niles. And um, we did something similar to this with youth and Niles this past summer, which was a wonderful collaborative experience. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Foga. <clears throat> I agree with all everybody else in terms of being able to partner with other agencies within the uh, Niles um, main community. And that would be giving us the opportunity to be able to socialize the individual programs and to uh, pique their interest in what we're trying to do. Now, it would be helpful to actually reach out, say, like the businesses who are actually involved in STEM and see whether or not they would be able to provide funds to have additional increased activities and in, say, like in the science and the technology portion of it, as well as look at grant processes from the state and federal government. I guess those have been looked into, but then we could see if we could be creative in terms of looking outside of the box, trying to get money from other uh, organizations. So I'd say that there's the potential of being able to bring in more people, be able to bring in, like you're saying, people from the nursing homes, and then make sure that we have all the individual residents of uh, the Niles main community be able to make use of the uh, the different programs over at the library. Thank you. Um, Mr. McCullough, and if any, at any point anybody wants me to repeat a question, I know we're just kind of clicking along, but- uh, I, I think I know what, um, I think one area that we, we could uh, contribute uh, partnering with is the Niles Historical Society. And we might consider giving them a small area within the library where they could keep changing and putting in new displays every month or something because they have an awful lot of stuff and they have very low attendance over there. And I think it'd be interesting and, and draw people into the library to see what's going on there. And uh, that would be uh, definitely uh, an attraction to bring more people in. Okay, uh, Ms. Keen Adams. There we go, sorry. Um, I think it's great. I, I'm all about collaborating. Um, I think there's lots of room for new ideas, but some ideas or some things that are existing in the library currently that maybe people don't know about um, are things like school librarians that do school visits on a regular basis with the different area schools. Um, and we also offer, the library also offers a business library card that can be used by different businesses in Niles. I do have lots of ideas for new things. Uh, there is a program called Laundry Cares where Laundry mats have little corners inside with books and literacy materials for kids. So we could be partnering with laundromats in the area. We could do a business scavenger hunt where kids could go looking for things in different businesses, thereby advertising for them for free. Um, it's kind of a win-win for everyone. I think it's always good to look at different kinds of collaborations and expand where we are. And also, but realize what we do have, we do have a lot of good things in place as well. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Schoenfeld. I agree with Steve and our other contestants, Joe. I believe that we can actually collaborate 
and move forward with the community, with community input. That's the most important thing. We need to have more community involvement, more programs for the seniors, more versatility, more language classes, more one-on-one -on -one communication for individuals. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Ms. Rosansky. Give me a pen. Oh, I got it. Ms. Rosansky. Um, we already do some outreach with the library. Um, there are stuff, things they do with the senior center and um, what nursing are facilities in the area. And there are also a lot of outreach with the local schools. Um, as far as reaching out to the parks and the other entities in the village, I am all for it. The more we reach out, the better it will be for our community. Um, I know uh, as far as the business, like Ms. Keen Adams says, businesses get free library cards. So we do reach out to them also. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question. Um, this is a diverse community. Our neighbors speak over 90 languages. They represent many different races, ethnic, ethnicities, and religions. Our gay and trans are uh, non-neurotypical and have physical disabilities. How will you ensure that the library remains a place that is welcoming and supportive of everyone? And the first, uh, Ms. Schwab is the first to answer this question in this round. I'm reading that book on how to erase institutional bias. And um, I think that's where we start. We understand where we are and how our community can benefit from the library. And we ensure that we don't have um, institutional bias in place, that we have a welcoming environment for all, that we use inclusive language in our publications, that we offer translation services for various languages, and, and that we're really in tune to the diverse needs of our community and its members. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Folger. Thank you very much. Um, I'm a, sub, I'm a uh, supervisor at Ardon National Laboratory, so I've gone through uh, diversity training to be able to help to understand the needs of the individuals with disadvantage, the, um, and, and in terms of being able to uh, understand people from the diverse backgrounds. My wife's Polish, uh, so I understand uh, being able to uh, worry about implicit biases toward people who are not, say, from this country. Uh, one of the things that I would say is that when you look at the programs that are on uh, given right now, all the virtual programs are in English, except for one which is in Polish. And so I would like to be able to say that maybe we should just, should suggest look at making some of our virtual programs also in Hispanic, in Spanish, because about 10% of our population in this area is Hispanic, and look at being able to broaden the virtual programs to other people. So uh, thank you. Okay, Mr. McCula. Yes, um, as far as uh, handicap uh, accessibility, uh, the building has to be, uh, I mean, there's mandates and, and the construction building code and everything. I don't think we need to worry about modifying our buildings to, to uh, make them handicap accessible. As far as, uh, I, I think we should concentrate on, on people learning English because that's the language here. And instead of stocking up on, books in seven different languages, if we got people to uh, assimilate and learn, learn English better, I think we would do more good in that area than in uh, uh, increasing our inventory of foreign language books. We could go, you know, in, infinite there. So uh, I think the, that would be the area to go is to, to help people learn English, maybe have classes there and have uh, uh, people to help translate. We do need to have, you know, some books in, in the languages, but I, learning language is more important than, uh, in the long term, than uh, 
having all these books that we we probably have a low circulation on. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Keen Adams. Yes, uh, I would have to say that I wholeheartedly disagree with that statement Mr. McCoola just made and uh, highly endorse having many books in many different languages because our community is made up of lots of different people. I do think people need to learn English at some point and I have worked many years in that field. Um, I, I think that not being able to learn how to read in your own language or about people who are like you you know, they say books are windows, right? And so if you open a book and you never can see yourself in it, then it's hard to figure out who you are. And so it's very important to have books in our library that people can see themselves in. Um, uh, one thing that I've been checking up on, I know that the, um, that the library has started their own committee, a staff committee of members um, to work on equity, diversity, and inclusion in the library. And that's important. I would follow up on that if I was on the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Schoenfeld. Diversity is the most important thing in our community. We, that's where we strive on and diversity is the most where we can take the avenues to the next level. We need more children involvement. We need that key factor between adults and young students. And if we can get that path, that is the most important path to our securing our development of the library. And that's all I have to say at this time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Rosansky. Sorry. Um, our library does have a GED program, which is mostly people who English is their second language. We have a very diverse collection um, and also very diverse programming for people who speak other languages. Our staff speaks multiple languages so that we can better help serve our community. Um, I, the only thing I can think of is we are in a community that is so diverse, we need to serve that community. Thank you. Thank you, and finally, Mr. Ryan. Um, yes, uh, we can start by understanding the differences of each other. Um, I believe that the library already has a lot of um, foreign language services available to the residents, and I know that they have their own section of books, and I'm, I, they can always get more, and I know that they're working on it, as the other candidates said, um, but um, and there's always more that can be done, and I'm sure we are working on that. And as a board member, I would like to um, have a foot in that as well. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next, for the next question, I'm gonna ask uh, library trustees to uh, discuss term limits. Um, Mr. McCoola uh, tried to introduce uh, did a petition drive to introduce term limits and the library's attorneys found that um, as a non-home rule community, term limits could not be introduced by referendum. Um, I'm gonna leave that history at that um, and just ask what your position is on term limits. And we're gonna start, I'm sorry, with uh, Mr. Foga. I believe in term limits, I think that um, basically, if you allow people to stay in a position for a very extended period of time, then you're not bringing in new blood, new ideas. And so as such, if we were to bring in new people constantly, that would allow for, uh, I'd say, a current, current churning of being able to bring in more diverse people, bringing in different ideas, being able to talk about different technologies that need to be involved. So by having term limits, that actually gives an opportunity for the young people in this community to look and become part of the library board, as well as candidates for other types of positions within our local, state, and uh, federal government. So I am a firm supporter of uh, term limits. Thank you. And Mr. McCullough. Yes. Am I on? Yeah. Yes. yes. 
Oh, okay. Um, I circulated a petition for term limits. It was a six year term. And um, the Illinois constitution allows for term limits. What uh, occurred is there was, there was no objector to the referendum and the library director took it upon herself to act as a judge and jury and wouldn't uh, put it on the ballot. Uh, we went to court. It was decided that because district law does not, it doesn't say anything against term limits, but it uh, doesn't allow for them. So it was taken off the ballot. But I believe that a six year term is long enough. People can do their best job in six years and we get a good turnover. We get new ideas, new people on there. And, and that's the way to go forward. We, we need to have, we have uh, 57,000 people in this district. Uh, there's no reason we can't find uh, seven good people at, you know, more than, uh, you know, over a six year period. Uh, there's, there's plenty of people there okay. and I'm sure a lot of them that are qualified. Incumbents have a, a, an advantage in an election and, and uh, uh, it, it makes it difficult for new, new people to come in. So okay. it's, thank it's you for that time. Long enough. Okay, next, uh, Ms. Keene Adams. Yes, um, yes, I do believe in term limits. I think they can be a very good thing um, and I think they are pretty necessary in most positions. Um, in our district, the only way to change that is to contact our legislators um, because of the home rule. So we can't achieve that in the way that Mr. McCool went about it, um, unfortunately. So yes, I do agree on term limits. I think there's a lot of way to look at it too. I'll, you know, we do have six year terms, which are a little bit long. There's always a possibility of changing it to four year terms and having them, you know, having two terms instead of one. There's a lot of ideas and I think it would be a great conversation to have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Uh, Schoenfeld. Yes, I believe in the term limit as well, because you need to bring in new ideas and you need to stress the importance of the library and the diversity that it actually brings to our community. And that's all. Okay, uh, Ms. Rosansky. Yeah, I believe in term limits. But because of us being a, a, a district and not under home rule, yes, like Mrs. Miss King Adams said, we people have to go through the state representatives. I have no problem with even changing, like she suggested, the length of terms. There's no reason we can't do that. This is something that I feel is definitely up for discussion. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Ryan. I have to agree with Becky and Patty. Um, I do um, believe in changing term limits, um, but it is something that we'll have to work on with our state legislatures. I think it's great to get new ideas in and uh, change of the board. Um, uh, and yes, that is all. Thank you. Okay, finally, Ms. Schwab. I too agree with the other candidates and similar to what some of the others have said, exploring other options and providing two terms, um, two four-year terms would provide for a learning curve as well as to be able to do work that a candidate might want to do or a board member might want to do. After all, new perspectives do does drive innovation. Very good, thank you. This will be our last question before closing statements. Um, <clears throat> transparency in government is important. How is the library doing on that front? And what, if any changes, would you support to increase transparency? We're gonna start with Mr. McCullough. Well, um, I'm not on the board right now, but uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, um, the way things are done, uh, the, the biggest thing is we don't have a realistic count of what our real circulation is. About three years ago, the library started counting uh, renewals as original borrowings. And at the same time, they eliminated the fine. And if your book was late, they counted that. If you were a day late, it counted as an additional borrowing. You didn't have to do anything. It automatically counted. So we don't really know what the numbers are. The last real numbers we had were 675,000 items. That means DVDs, magazines, books. 
And at that point, our budget was $8 million. So if you divide the, the um, uh, you do the math, it, it came out to over $10 for each uh, item that was loaned out as far as the cost. I know there's other things going on like programs and stuff, but that was way out of um, control because our, our circulation was down, our attendance was down and our costs were high. And, and okay, we need thank to- Thank you. Ms. Keen Adams. Um, yeah, I think that the library is doing pretty well with transparency. Uh, the board meetings are all public. All the documents that the board receives are public property and can be viewed online at any time. And I think that we try very hard to be truthful in all of our communications. Um, I think that we can compare ourselves to other libraries in that way as well. You know, I think it's mandated that we put all of our documents on online for people to view and that all libraries are doing the same. And so we can compare ourselves and say that, yes, we are doing a good job because of it. Um, how to increase it, I think would be uh, by doing maybe more uh, community surveys like we did recently and asking the public for what they want and how they would like to see transparency input from the community would be very valuable in that, in that respect. Thank you, Ms. Schoenfeld. Um, I believe that our library is not fully transparent. Um, I do have a couple of things that I would like to add that are have not been really directed. Um, as of, I, how can I ex exactly say this? In 2019, you are replacing a roof for $900,000. And then also you wanted to put a sphere up to the library, which was $75,000, which was wasteful spending. And you, it's constant spending. And now the Culver parking lot, you have a lease for 25 years for $881 for a month. I just find that very appalling, and I think there needs to be more transparency. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Rosansky. Ms. Rosansky. You're unmuted. Go ahead. I know. Okay, I was trying to adjust the volume so I could hear you. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I <laughs> the thing was sliding around as I'm trying to adjust it. Um, as far as transparency, um, we do have our video meetings. Honesty and communication, we print things and have them on the website. All your documents are pretty much all online. Video is online. Um, we should increase, um, and get information by polling the residents and see what they expect for us to have. And as far as saying the sphere, or sphere, excuse me, that was donated. So I'm sorry, uh, we didn't spend that money. It was donated. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ryan. Transparency. All right. So I, I think the board is pretty transparent already. They have all their meetings online. Um, they have all their packets basically online and um, all the everything you, that they do and all, all, all the decisions that they're making are basically all in the public's eye. So um, as it should be since it, that is what we are serving. We are serving the community. So um, if there is better ways we can be transparent, I guess we can pull the community and see what their needs are and how we can fulfill those needs. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Ms. Schwab. I also agree that the library, uh, the transparency is well maintained. All records are public. Um, and public can view them whenever they want or need to. I think a way to increase transparency as we move forward is developing that new strategic plan and ensuring that the short and long-term goals of the strategic plan are developed with community input as well as detailed and outlined to be viewed by the community. 
Thank you. And finally, Mr. Foga. I agree with in terms of transparency, working with say community focus groups, looking at online surveys, being able to talk to people to find out what they feel in terms of what the individuals uh, programs at the library should be. In terms of transparency, in terms of cost, I can't find any of the RFPs for any of the work that's been done for the library online for the uh, individuals to be able to look at, to be able to say, okay, this is for the new roof, who is the actual, what is the uh, specifications for the roof, as well as who is actually bidding on it. Maybe it's on the journal, but I can't find it online. So in terms of cost transparency, I think we need to increase that so that people know what are the individual uh, capital costs that are being considered by the board before they actually make a decision to see whether or not it's in the best interest of the, the community. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're gonna to go to closing statements. Um, we're gonna have uh, one minute and 30 seconds for each closing statement. Um, and uh, again, I wanna thank everyone for their participation in tonight's forum. Um, we've tried to get as much in in a very short period of time as we could, and we're running a little long, but I, I think that's, I think people will give us on that. So we're gonna do closing statements again, one minute, 30 seconds, and we will start with Mr. McCullough. Am I on? Yes. I okay. The library needs rebuilding more than ever. Mismanagement and incompetence existed before COVID and are even worse now that COVID is on the decline. The incumbents who broke the library are not the ones you want fixing the library. There's two of them up for reelection. I'm running with a team of three other concerned citizens who want to improve and prudently manage our library. Our team will eliminate duplicity by, consolidated 100, by consolidating 150 plus programs and make those programs more relevant to all. We will also expand programs on contemporary health and wellness, offer programs that supplement schools curriculums, create programs for cultural, civic, and history education. We plan to add resources for job application and training create a citizen advisory book selecting committee. We will revitalize the library by business budgeting procedures. If we find we have more funds than we need, we will abate that excess back for the taxpayers. I'm asking for your vote and also for the vote for Olivia Hanushek, Steve Folga, and Susan Schoenfeld, so we can succeed as an outstanding team to bring the Niles Library into the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. King Adams. Yes. Uh, as we wrap up our forum tonight, I ask you to sincerely consider what you want our library to be. You've heard all of our ideas and opinions, and now it's time for you to make an informed decision. I want to serve you by ensuring that our library continues to be a place for all. I think my personal and professional experience lend pertinent viewpoints and expertise that will benefit the library. I envision our library as a welcoming place for young and old, a top-notch tech center, an educational and professional support system, and a safe gathering place. If I am elected to serve as trustee, my priorities will be to help guide the library through its journey to the new normal, to be financially responsible and resourceful, to support staff, and to work towards more equity, diversity, and inclusion in our library and committee. Please punch 125 for, for me and help me to safeguard our library. It is our community's lifeline. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Schoenfeld. Well, I want to say thank you, Tom. In closing, I hope that you have learned a little about myself and what I hope to achieve for our wonderful library. If elected, I hope to help my neighbors and my fellow community members to include them to help to expand the library's resources and work to be as transparent as possible. We need integrity, diversity, and transparency. If you have any further questions for me, please do not hesitate to reach out to me on my email, which is Suzanne Schoenfeld at gmail.com. And thank you so much for everyone. And please vote for Steve and Joe and Olivia and myself. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Rosansky. In 
closing, I would like to say that as a current board member of the and a trustee, I am happy to be running again. So many of our citizens and local educators had complimented things, complimentary things to say about our library and all it has to offer. It has shown me just how important a resource it is for our community. I am passionate about education, promoting literacy, and building a strong community for all. I am devoted to being fiscally responsible and ensuring that the library continues to be the best value for our taxpayers. Please safeguard our library. Thank you. Vote 121, Patty Rosansky. Thank you. Mr. Ryan. So according to a Village of Nile survey that happened three years ago, the library ranked in the top three of the best managed government organizations in Niles. In 2017, the library received a special recognition award for its positive impact in the community by the Niles Chamber of Commerce. The Illinois Public Library Trustee Manual states, the success and achievements of public libraries depend upon the leadership, commitment, and dedication of its trustees. I know for certain that the candidates on our ticket are dedicated and committed to serve with the best interests of the taxpayers' dollars while maintaining beneficial community resources. We will conduct polls of the community and its needs and implement those needs in future programming. Unlike my opposition, I would rather spend 25,000 of the taxpayers' money on programming rather than an unlawful lawsuit against the library. Who the residents vote for during this election will make or break the future of our library. Please vote for Jack Ryan, number 127, and it will be my duty as a board member to safeguard our library and maintain its value in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Schwab. As we near the end of this forum, I want to once again thank Tom Robb for moderating and to everyone participating tonight, I wanna to thank you for the robust conversation. To the voters, if there is one thing I want you to take away from tonight's forum, it's that I am wholeheartedly committed to this community and to serving on this board of trustees. If elected, I will bring sound fiscal monitoring, management and accountability to ensure taxpayer dollars are used responsibly. I will bring my professional expertise in program development, innovation, and community partnerships and build upon and safeguard the great work this library has done for our Niles Main District. If you want a qualified individual who, be who believes in transparency and has the best interest of our community in mind, write me in. My name is Angelica Schaub, write me in on the ballot in this election. Thank you for listening. Gracias por su atención y gentiles de Vesuhania. Good night. Thank you. And finally, Mr. Folga. Well, thank you again, uh, Tom. And I'd like to thank all the other candidates for being on this candidate forum and the opportunity of being able to talk with everybody about the differing opinions that we have. Um, and as you've heard, our team of Olivia Schoenfeld, Joe McCullough, um, Susan Schoenfeld uh, and myself discussed the various issues of importance to the patrons of this library district. And so we've been trying to offer solutions to those various problems. And so one of the things that we've talked about is to try to have sound fiscal oversight of the and cost transparency. And that would be based upon the work that we have all done uh, and myself being a program manager handling millions of dollars of different types of projects for the federal government and apply that ability uh, toward this li library uh, board, as well as being able to put into a formal bidding process for all the major uh, services that we have, information that would be available on the internet for people to be able to look at, be able to react to, criticize, give us their input as such. And so have a broad base of uh, resident participation, as well as being in the technical field, be able to, I'm very adamant about this, is that given the fact that we look at what's been happening in our community, 
that we need to be able to uh, support our residents in pursuing technical skills. So please vote for me and my rest of my uh, team and bring change to the library board. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's gonna conclude our forum for this evening. I'd like to thank everybody for participating tonight and to everybody out there watching. Remember election day is Tuesday, April 6th. Um, there's also early voting, so please take advantage of that. Thank you very much. Good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. On behalf of the library, thank you all for participating. Good night. Thank, thank you, you very much for having us. Thank you, Ms. Lemke. Well. welcome.